So I did a few shorts talking about how I got the scar on the side of my head, but they're broken up into part one and two and dropped like a week apart. So I figured I owed you guys a full length story with a little more in depth. When I was about 18 or 19, there was this girl that would hit me up every so often back in the MySpace days and be like, hey, how are you? Or, you know, hey, oh, you know them? I know them. Nothing romantic, just small talk. So one time she hits me up and is like, hey, can we hang out? Can I come hang out with you? I, and I was hanging out with this chick already. And threesomes weren't that prevalent back then, at least not for me. So that's not what I had in mind. I just figured, you know, she'd come and hang out and drink with us. So I was like, yeah, sure. And she said, uh, well, I'm riding with my brother and he's going to take my truck. So I'll just hop in with you guys. But we can't meet in a public place because he's got warrants. And I should have known then that something was up, but I was dumb. And I knew who the guy was that she was calling her brother. Um, one of my cousins was good friends with him. And I had another really good friend who was also friends with him. But, you know, we had never met and he probably heard, never heard my name or he just didn't give a fuck. So we meet. And, you know, I'm talking to this dude. He's leaned up against the back of the truck, you know, the bed. And he's about 300 pounds. He's got tattoos all over his face, teardrops and shit. And this is back before face tattoos were a big thing. So that was out of the ordinary. I was about 170, 170 pounds. And I'm drinking this quart bottle, you know, a 40-ounce quart bottle. And I, when I got done, I chunked it, which is the dumbest thing I could have ever done. So we're talking, and then... I started noticing like four or five guys walking out of the distance, which didn't really alarm me as West Pensacola. Dudes are always walking around. And if anything, in my mind, I thought maybe these guys will fuck with us and me and him might have to fight them. So they're walking and they're a good ways away, but they're getting closer and closer. And I, I start, as we're talking, like cut my eyes every so often, keeping an eye on them. And when they get about 60 feet away, he goes, who the fuck are these dudes? So I turn, and I'm like, I don't know. And when I went to turn back around, as soon as my head came back around, he was connecting with a tire iron that he had, I guess, reached in the back of the truck and grabbed when I turned my head and swung. And by the time my head came around is when it connected. It hit me here. It put a hole in my skull. It uh, took a chunk of flesh out about an inch in diameter, about that big, perfect circle. Looked like I got shot in the head. I went down to a knee. And I shook it off and jumped back up pretty quickly, which I think kind of surprised him because I jumped up and was like, what the fuck? And he was just like, like froze for a second. And it gave me time to look back at the other guys. And now they were all running at me and they all had something in their hand, a stick, a pipe, a, a bat. I'm not sure what everybody had because I didn't get a good chance to do an inventory. I can tell you they used it all pretty well, though. So I tried to run. And I don't know if it was from a loss of blood because, you know, I was covered head to toe in blood or just maybe one of them ran me down and tripped me. But I went down and as soon as I hit the ground, they were on my ass. Like they beat the fuck out of me. And at some point, one of them got over top of me with a pistol and put it in my face and went in my pockets. I want to say I heard it click, but I can't be sure to be honest. You know, jokes on them though. I only had like 38 cents. Ha ha, asshole. So they, you know, talk a little shit and then they walk off, get in the car and leave. So I get up because I never lost consciousness. I get up and get in the car with the girl I rode with. They didn't fuck with her. She recognized one of them though. The, uh, the chick that set me up, her boyfriend, he was the one who put it all together. And later on, I found out that they, like, he said something like, uh, oh, you know, we did it because we heard that you had jumped my little brother, which that never happened. Uh, one of my friends beat up his little brother, but... His little brother knew me and knew I didn't jump him, so I don't think he ever said that. I think they just wanted to rob somebody or jump somebody. So we go back to my cousin's house where I had been hanging out earlier that night. And I, I didn't I knew that I was fucked up, but I didn't know I was that fucked up. Like I knew the head bled a lot, so I thought I had a few gashes. And I walk inside and the girl goes in there screaming, which wakes up my cousin. He comes out and as soon as he takes a look at me, starts loading up a shotgun and I was like, Fuck, let me look in the mirror real quick. And I see this huge hole in the side of my head. And I'm like, holy fuck. Fuck all that. Let's go to the hospital now. And somehow or another, they were able to push this together. And sew it. I don't know how the hell they did it. But I had one here as well. Which was kind of funny. This one, you know, when they stretch to like sew something. Sometimes that skin stays like that for a little bit. And for like a month or two, my eyebrow was like this. From the stitch job up here. Then I had another one here which didn't need stitches. But... 
Um, you know, the hospital's kind of fucked up because they had my mom in there while still covered in blood, having her help wipe me off. And she's standing there crying, and I'm just like, I know that I didn't deserve what they did to me, but I was living in that realm. Like, so at some point, something like that was going to happen, you know, whether I had deserved it or not. And, uh, the girl that was with me, the cops came to the, the, the hospital. I didn't, I said, I didn't know anybody there that did it. Just some guys. And, uh, she told one of the main guy's name, which, like I said, I was living in that realm. So I didn't want to see somebody go to prison for some shit that I probably, I, I've never done anybody that bad, but I lived a scoundrel lifestyle as well. So I told the cops, no, it wasn't him. And, uh, you know, some years went by. I, I figured out, like, you know, I'm living this around. I need to change some shit, which I didn't right away. But I did at some point. And now, like, uh, the last few years, I'll be driving around town. And I'll see this guy, the main guy that set it up and all, riding a bike. And he's not riding it for fitness. He's a loser. And uh, I'll think to myself, like, I could just pull over and fuck this dude's world up. Like, he, he's not going to be able to stop me. Nobody's going to be able to pull me off because there's nobody here to break it up or anything. He won't even know who I am because, like, he, he doesn't recognize me every time he sees me. So he wouldn't even, if he wanted to tell somebody, he wouldn't be able to tell him who. But then I'm like, well, you know, fuck it. Life's got him pretty good. And then it's funny, I, I've seen him even, like, in the last couple weeks and, uh, so like I said, he's just a fucking loser. So it, it doesn't really bother me as much, you know. I, I don't feel like I need to, like, take vengeance or anything like that. It's just I was living a fucked up life. And when you live in that realm, something like that's eventually going to happen to you.